Yes. Well, shall I make it full screen? We are good to go. Recording is good. Uh, yeah, I, th I think it's full screen enough, uh, but, uh, Ah, yeah, you can do that, yeah, of course. But okay, but first I'll, I'll introduce you. So welcome everybody to this ICTP Math Associate Seminar. So we're going to have a talk today and also one week from now, November 19, we'll have a talk by Cecilia Salgado. Looking forward also to that. But the speaker of today is Jochna Perjapat from the University of Mumbai. And we're very happy to have her speak about her new work on reaction diffusion equations on evolving domains, regularity and global existence. So the floor is yours. So uh, thank you very much. I thank Zach for the in invitation and in fact the entire math group at ICTP for giving me this opportunity to present my work. Uh, and uh, I will be speaking on uh, reaction diffusion equations on uh, evolving domain. Uh, we'll talk uh, specifically about uh, global existence results, including regularity. Uh, I would like to say in beginning that I'm not going to do any or show any technical cal uh, calculations or computations, but uh, just give an um, uh, idea or sketch of what goes into the proof and the main result. So maybe, maybe it may not, maybe it is a shorter talk than, than what one expects. So, okay. So uh, this is uh, something which I had been reading during last few months, and um, it is yeah, it is a joint work with uh, Dr. Vandana Sharma from IIT Jodhpur, India, and um, it has been very interesting to work with her on this kind of field on reaction diffusion equation. So let me start with a brief uh, introduction of what is known and what has been done. Uh, of course, I'm going to refer to very few of these uh, recent works. Uh, and for detailed references, uh, maybe you can refer to our paper, which will be on archive soon. So uh, what is reaction uh, diffusion equation? We cannot. Uh, so, system of uh, reaction diffusion equations uh, are uh, used to model pattern formation in chemistry and biology. So, basically, uh, I think uh, it was uh, Turing uh, who who had used uh, these um, uh, equations to model pattern formations uh, either on shells or. Uh, uh, the patterns which are formed on animals as they develop, like for example, the stripes on zebra and uh, some other animals. Yeah? And um, uh, what used to be done initially was uh, like theoretical and numerical studies were done on fixed domain. And now people are kind of moving on to domains which are either growing or shrinking. And when I say domains, then not only uh, not only like um, domains in the Euclidean space, but uh, also also on uh, general manifolds. So, for example, one can consider a sphere or a ellipse, or one can also think of uh, uh, these kind of equations, which are uh, used to model um, cell growth in mathematical biology, and that then then you can have uh, uh, different types of surfaces which can consider which one can consider. So, what is the equation? Yeah, yeah. So, so here uh, here what I'm doing is I am directly writing uh, the equation, which is which is. Um, uh, which is uh, for the uh, domain which is evolving with time. So instead of word evolving, which usually represents uh, something which grows. Okay? So here uh, one can also use deforming, which means either you grow or shrink in one part or grow in one direction. So one can consider a more general situation. So here, uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is, um, time derivative and you have this one extra term. So, so if, if this middle term doesn't appear and say your C is just 
a function of y not depending on t then you would get a reaction diffusion equation on a fixed domain so if i say t equal to zero over here then everything becomes on fixed domain so i will just set up the equations and uh, equation and <clears throat> Uh, and and continue and uh, try to relate with what we are doing soon okay so here uh, we look at uh, this um, system so uh, though i am writing here only as one equation for simplicity you can just think of it as m equal to 1 to begin with uh, you have d uh, uh, it is uh, this corresponds to the diffusion term and this is the you know, coupling parameter between the various uh, components of your system. So here, one can in general consider C equal to C1 to Cm. This is going to be your uh, diffusion term. So it is uh, for C1, you will have an equation and this is F which takes into account C1 to Cm, all of them. So here, uh, one can consider uh, the way I write it over here. So this is kind of a matrix form. You will have C1 C1, C1, and F1 over here, where F1 depends on all M. And uh, usually one assumes that uh, these uh, coordinate functions are locally Lipschitz. Okay. So this is the expression uh, which is considered for, which is already existing for evolving domains. Yeah. So here, uh, uh, one needs to know that the term, the the term a y t, yeah, this this term, this a, which appears over here, uh, it is referred to as the flow velocity, okay, and this corresponds to flow velocity, and um, it is the flow which is generated by the evolution of the domain, and of course, this is the expansion as i said you can just look at m equal to one and you will one can understand that this is the gradient term which comes because of the uh, additional condition that the domain omega is uh, deforming and uh, due to uh, um, one usually assumes uh, uh, i think that is called as reynolds uh, transport theorem that uh, the flow velocity is same as the domain velocity so y is going to be a function of rho t times x so basically one can think of uh, the uh, the fact that uh, the flow velocity is separable in t variable and the space variable so that that kind of uh, simplifies uh, later computations also as we will see <clears throat> So uh, let's uh, let me just speak about uh, uh, some of the works. As I said, these I'm mentioning very few of them. Uh, one of the earlier works was in 1999 by Crampton et al. And they considered uniform and isotropic domain growth in one dimension reaction diffusion system. And here, um, as uh, I have written over here, like they, they allow like sometimes the time to grow fast or time to be slow. Like they, they control the velocity of growth and try to see try to see how the patterns change. Okay, so many of these mm -hmm. existing works they are uh, just uh, mostly focusing on numerics and then trying to uh, observe how the uh, patterns emerge okay, after so they start with an initial initial pattern uh, they allow they apply the uh, differential equation they allow the program to run for a certain period of time and then they try to see how the patterns have developed uh, at certain later time capital t that is what is usually done using the numerics okay uh, uh, then uh, also uh, uh, one of the important papers was in uh, 2004 by Plaza, Padilla, and uh, there were a couple of more collaborators uh, where they developed the general formulation of uh, reaction diffusion theory on isotropically evolving one and two dimensional manifolds. Okay, so they, they, uh, they derived the equation for uh, general manifolds using the Laplace Beltrami operator, etc. Yeah, and uh, with with uh, of course motivation from biological settings means they had a problem where they were considering how the 
curvature of the surface so where the evolution is taking place or where the pattern is uh, forming uh, affects the resulting pattern after the growth okay. so so for example like you may have a small shell and there is an initial pattern and over a period of time there the patterns develop and then they see what kind of patterns are formed uh, uh, in the shell after it has completed uh, its growth period. That's what they are interested in. <clears throat> so uh, the, the latest uh, result which uh, I found, and in fact, uh, this is uh, kind of uh, quite interesting. And uh, these are uh, result by Cross and his collaborators where they generalized uh, the modeling of reaction diffusion systems on growing manifolds, which was developed by in the previous work of Plaza to allow for dilational anisotropic growth. So one thing which we observe is that uh, if you saw, um, we had the assumption that the flow velocity is uh, proportional to is of the form rho t times x. So it is like dilational in um, in the space variable, right? You have rho t and your x is your usual coordinates. So here, here, uh, here uh, you, you can allow anisotropic growth. So in different directions, one can allow different parameters to be depending on the t variable. So at this point, I would like to show the figure uh, from this particular paper. So I will, uh, I will escape, from, escape from the, yes. So, yes, so this is this is the figure which I have taken from their paper and uh, as you can see, uh, they, they, they have uh, studied. Uh, so here, here they are studying the reaction diffusion equation on, uh, so this is the initial pattern which they have and then uh, this is the pattern which they have on, on an ellipse. Okay, this is a two-dimensional figure and uh, or manifold one can say this is a two-dimensional manifold and then you allow it to grow okay so as we see that uh, here uh, after a certain period of time the pattern becomes this okay? so uh, so so actually this is more visible in this uh, second figure where 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 the initial uh, initial um, pattern is on the sphere then, then they allow it to grow in this axial direction, okay? And then they have a resulting pattern here. Here in, in this uh, figure C, they have allowed it to grow in X direction as well as Y direction. So one can easily see that uh, you are having an isotropic, right? Because uh, you are growing more in the X direction and less in the Y direction or Z direction. This is a three-dimensional uh, plot which they have got. And then this is the uh, final means you you do these kind of growth actually uh, or say in x direction y direction and after a certain time you again back come back to the sphere and these are the patterns which appear over here. So most of the most of the existing works uh, have been about the stability of the uh, re stability results and uh, usually applied to do numerics and study how the patterns grow on different manifolds. So your ellipse and here on the sphere. So yeah. So so that is that is. In, in fact, that paper contains uh, other numerics also, and there are quite a few nice pictures. Uh, yeah, which one can see also uh, as as one can see that this is the most uh, recent work. Uh, and uh, yeah, so yes, so they studied how rate of deformation, type of growth or extremity of growth uh, affect the patterns formed on the domain in case there is, if the pattern changes at all. Okay, so then they studied how, what are the final results after applying the numerics. Okay. <clears throat> So, uh, so as I mentioned, that many existing results uh, focus on. So, I need to go to the show screen again. Sorry, yeah. So, the many existing result focus on uh, focus on uh, growth uh, and um, uh, curvature. Uh, 
focus on uh, effects of growth and curvature of the domain on the resulting patterns and their stability. Uh, but uh, uh, there are very few works where uh, people have studied the question of uh, existence and regularity of uh, solutions of systems of reaction diffusion equation on domains which are evolving with time. Now, one of the results which we have come across uh, is uh, by uh, Chandrasekhar and his collaborators, uh, and Chandrasekhar and Atida, and maybe one more, there is one more person, uh, where uh, they had included uh, in their work, of course, they again focus on um, uh, stability and uh, you know the uh, effect of uh, curvature and growth of the domain and how the patterns change but uh, here um, yeah so so uh, but they had also studied the you know, global existence uh, uh, of a solution of uh, uh, this uh, uh, reaction diffusion equation on growing domains okay? and uh, their their proof uh, was based on the work of uh, morgan jeff morgan uh, on stationary domain and uh, what i would like to remark is that uh, they 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 did this work uh, which which of course one can see if uh, one looks at any of the previous papers also uh, one sees that uh, the usual method is that uh, you take your problem on the growing domain and you reduce it to uh, or transform it to a fixed domain okay, where you now look for a solution which is also depending on time and there are certain extra terms which uh, also involve um, the fact that your domain is changing okay, with time. Now, I, 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 will, I will show you in, uh, in the next few slides what I mean. So yeah, I'll, I'll comment about this maybe when I write down the equation. Okay, so this is one of the work which we found. And uh, in, in our work, so yes, uh, this is uh, my collaborator. So she has been working on a reaction diffusion, a system of reaction diffusion equations on, um, on stable domain or stationary domain. And uh, what we will do here is that uh, the results that she has developed in a couple of papers, uh, recent papers, we are, uh, we are going to adapt them to the domain which is deforming with time. Okay. So yes. So yeah. So, uh, uh, so uh, let me go back uh, to the notations. Uh, my here. Uh, omega is a domain which is uh, changing with time and it is with uh, boundaries, uh, C2 boundary. Uh, and I'm going to consider omega t in um, Rn, Rn, uh, Euclidean space. Yeah? And uh, if, if we denote C as the chemical concentration in the domain omega t, then this is the equation which uh, drives the diffusion process. So here, here, as you see, means it really doesn't matter uh, whether I write uh, C as one function or as a uh, vector. But uh, for simplicity, I'm just going to write it in this simple form. Uh, if one wants to write, think of it as a vector, one can write it as a vector also. But here, it's just one equation for uh, for uh, to avoid the technical complications. So here, here uh, yeah, so this is uh, D of omega t. So here, uh, this is the measure uh, on omega, which is, of course, also changing with time. So this is, this derivative is outside this integral. And this is uh, the normal derivative on the boundary, again, which is changing with time. So this is the governing equation for the um, chemical uh, diffusion process of chemical concentration on a domain, which is changing with time. Okay. So here, here uh, we have uh, the initial domain. Uh, we fix or we take uh, uh, initial domain omega 0 is equal to omega. And uh, we assume, uh, as we usually do in geometry, that that uh, your omega t is uh, y t of omega. So basically, we want to say that omega t is uh, generated by flow of omega under a given diffeomorphism. 
so uh, then 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 one can see that uh, your um, your measure is just going to be the determinant of uh, this particular flow which i have defined here times the usual euclidean measure on omega okay, <clears throat> okay. so uh, i i uh, if one solves the above relation then uh, then one gets this particular equation Okay. so here here uh, this is this is what uh, we get as flow velocity the equation that a x uh, t whatever term which i had got before so this is your flow velocity means and now uh, since uh, we have simply written omega t as y t of omega uh, one can see uh, the justification that why we get this term over here okay. and and then the equation is yeah one can work out and equate the terms on the left hand side and right hand side now it is nice uh, i think it is still nice because we are getting um, uh, the linear term but it comes with negative sign so it does not cause too much problem yeah and i think usually that's what i would say yes so so now so so this is this is where i uh, transform uh, i'm going to say that uh, my original equation which was uh, uh, represented uh, on omega t if i define my uxt as cyxtt then my previous equation becomes now equation on a stationary domain so if if i solve for u in this particular equation then i have solved uh, for c in omega t okay so uh, are are there any questions i have removed the are there any questions so i think there was a question in the chat if you saw that I, because i minimized this Yes, I can read it to you if you want. So uh, Boris is saying, I would like to know if there is someone studying the effects of time delay in the reaction diffusion system. Time delay. No. I, I, I do not know, actually. No, I do not know. I do not know. Because as I said, means this is for something which I'm learning. So yeah, sorry. But, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. okay. So I don't know. It because because it becomes visible here, so I don't know how to take care of it. So yes. Okay. So 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 this is this is the. Uh, so so now what what uh, what uh, we have done is uh, reduce the problem to stationary domain. Okay, and uh, but we see that uh, the fact that we have uh, this flow term now uh, it is going to be a different Laplace operator. Okay, it is going to be the actually uh, it is the pullback of the metric uh, of whatever we have on omega t to omega, and then you have this additional linear term which comes from the because of the flow term over there. So, so here, here, yes. So, what we do, as I said, is uh, I take uh, we take we take a simpler situation where uh, we just look at the eighty times x, okay? simple flow means one can probably uh, introduce here um, complicated matrix A I J T and uh, go through the entire work, but uh, for sake of simplicity. We are just trying to work with the simple case where the matrix A is diagonal, and uh, as you can see, uh, we do allow for an isotropic flow. So you can you don't need to have one doesn't need to have lambda one equal to lambda two equal to lambda three. One can have different uh, flow, different speeds in different directions. So yes, and, and uh, it is. Uh, quite simple we start with the initial one identity and these are diffeomorphisms so these are non singular matrices and i have written it down for 3 by 3 but of course uh, same thing can be generalized for 
n so yes i think there is a typo over here because oh, sorry yeah yeah so so here this is a determinant of n product divided by n product it should be n product here because uh, this equation which i have written i have written for n dimension yeah, so sorry about that so yes your delta t once you do the transformation uh, you get it because you have a simple representation here you have it to be 1 upon lambda i t square d square by dx i square so this is your if this is identity you are going to get your usual laplacian okay. so yeah when t equal to 0 you are back to usual laplacian okay. yes yeah so yes so uh, this is this is uh, what uh, we finally come to so what we are doing is uh, studying this system of equation uh, on the stationary domain as i said that uh, if if one does not have growth then uh, of course this uh, uh, operator uh, oh, sorry i have yeah no, no, sorry the, i think there is another mistake i am so bad yeah so here here this is l l okay i i i should have this is a typo over here it should be l which is given by uh, di delta t minus at where at is this term okay the term which we had got in the previous previous one here yeah so so i apologize for yeah this typo so over here so this is dt ui equal to um, yeah uh, so l times ui yeah i think i think i should write it in vector form uh, this is the this is the neumann uh, boundary condition here eta now uh, is uh, the Uh, unit normal vector outward vector on the fixed domain omega so so the usual uh, normal derivative condition uh, uh, on omega t translates to di uh, gradient t sub t ui so gradient sub t ui is uh, nothing but 1 by lambda i times del by del ui okay, so yes yeah so this is my new gradient vector Okay, so it is going to be at inverse of the nabla which i have and it is of this particular form okay and uh, for for sake of uh, for calculations that we require to do uh, i think uh, this is a natural condition that we assume that uh, these uh, coefficients which appear over here are bounded okay so since here in this paper we are only interested in um, global existence and regularity so we are assuming uh, everything is kind of fine uh, so because because uh, in 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 practice uh, of course uh, one can expect that um, uh, with with time maybe uh, the the domain breaks up or the boundary no longer remains smooth so all these uh, kind of possibilities one can expect but uh, for sake of our analysis we are assuming that everything remains fine over the entire period of time so the domain omega uh, omega t uh, evolves nicely uh, or in, in fact uh, what we have assumed is that as t goes to infinity my omega t remains in neighborhood of a fixed domain omega infinity this is just a notation so so and 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 that also ensures that uh, say if gamma t is the uh, gamma t uh, is the boundary of my domain then gamma t also remains in neighborhood of one fixed boundary so it doesn't maybe it oscillates but uh, you do not have uh, Uh, like uh, the smoothness doesn't break or the domain doesn't split there is no crossing over no singularity is developing so we we are just uh, trying to uh, work in kind of ideal situation okay so 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 that's that's one remark which i wanted to make so here here uh, so so uh, coming back here yeah, this is the equation uh, sorry for for this um, error here 
and and these are the uh, assumptions um, so so here uh, we assume that uh, the initial uh, function on the stationary domain at the time t equal to 0 is in c2 omega bar and it satisfies the compatibility condition on the boundary this is the non homogeneous boundary condition <coughs> Uh, here uh, we also assume that uh, the nonlinear functions on the right hand side. So these remember the FIs are on the domain and GIs are on the boundary. So these are quasi positive. So uh, so what it means is that uh, if I take FI and if I take UI equal to zero, then sorry. On all other uh, m minus, um, n minus one variables, the function is non-negative. Yeah, and and this condition ensures that if we start with uh, initial non-negative data, then the solution of the system continues to remain non-negative. <clears throat> Yeah, and uh, yeah, th this is a condition um, which is um, we refer to as VL1. So here uh, one sees that you have linear combinations of FI and uh, GI. Uh, so again, boundary and uh, domain, uh, and there exists a fixed constant. So this is uh, strictly greater than zero. Otherwise, it's redundant and it's missing a little. I'm so sorry. So you you should have L1 over here uh, times. Uh, this particular sum, okay. L1 over here uh, times this particular sum. Okay, so this is uh, this is condition VL1. Okay, and uh, this is uh, the condition uh, which uh, uh, FI and GI are polynomially bounded. Okay, so there are there are uh, there exist M and a natural number L such that uh, these functions are less than this summation of the coordinates uh, power L. So here, uh, these are usually, uh, the, this condition is uh, used for, uh, uh, for deriving higher regularity of the solutions. So these are the you know, common conditions which I have put over here. Uh, let, let me say uh, over here that uh, my uh, collaborator's paper, uh, it has got recently accepted uh, in um, communications and applicable analysis i can see pure and applied analysis i believe and uh, our, our work over here uh, relies on the work in that particular paper so many of the assumptions uh, which uh, i have taken in fact all the assumptions are compatible for with the assumptions uh, which she has assumed on the stationary domain so uh, the, the difference is that uh, if you have gradient there, then we have to uh, kind of generalize it to uh, nabla t over here, where you have a slightly modified uh, gradient term. And uh, also the uh, operator is uh, different. It is delta t in our case. Okay? So yes, uh, so I will I will state the first result, uh, which is uh, talks about local existence. So here, uh, if we have um, you know, the functions fi and gi are locally Lipschitz and satisfies uh, Vn, that is the Neumann boundary condition, and uh, this is quasi positive. Okay. Uh, then one can find uh, T max strictly greater than zero such that uh, the <clears throat> system, the, 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 this system, yeah, uh, this system has, uh, uh, yeah. this system has a unique maximal component wise non negative solution. So here you can see that I have written it for only two, two but it is for M. M, uh, it is also true. And uh, if uh, T max is finite, then uh, this limit uh, goes to infinity. Okay. So, so here, here uh, yeah, as T goes to infinity, T approaches T max from the left, yeah, it goes to infinity. So yeah, uh, this is the first uh, result which uh, shows the existence of uh, non-negative local existence. Okay. 
and uh, for the proof oh yeah the, the so before i talk about the proof let me mention the main results here so so here uh, the next we have also proved the global existence um, result uh, and, and here what i have done is uh, I mean, instead of writing it as two theorems i have combined them uh, what we have shown is that uh, in the case so so this is again uh, Neumann boundary condition, quasi positive and polynomial growth, uh, polynomially bounded, I should say. And uh, for m equal to 2, so this is uh, if I have two components, u1 and u2, or which I refer to as uh, uv, then uh, if you assume vl1, and, and suppose that there exists a non decreasing function h such that one of the component functions is bounded. Okay. And so remember, uh, VL1 gave a fixed constant L1, whereas, whereas here uh, we have uh, one more condition on the boundary, on the GIs, that whenever uh, there exists K greater than zero, such that wherever A is bigger than or equal to K, you can find LA such that this estimate holds. So you have one over here and A and if this is similar to L1, but uh, as I said, L1 condition say gives us fixed constant, whereas here you have one can um, one can one has a choice to make. Okay, so so I, either you assume one component is bounded by a suitable function, non-decreasing function, together with this condition, or for any m, um, if this condition, what is called as VL holds, there exists k such that for this particular vector with am equal to 1, okay, and all these ais strictly greater than or equal to 0, there exists la greater than 0 with this property, okay, linear combination of fi. As, as well as linear combination of GI is less than this particular sum. Then the equation, the system has a unique component wise non-negative global solution. Okay? So for M equal to two, uh, if we assume that one of the component is bounded, we are able to arrive, we, we are able to arrive to global existence and uh, but uh, for in general for any m greater than or equal to 2 we if we assume this we are still able to arrive at global existence uh, one one thing which i would like to mention is that for m equal to 2 the vl1 condition is of course contained in this one okay so uh, why uh, let, let me let me say a few words about the proof uh, i just wanted to mention so about uh, local existence, uh, uh, the proof of local existence uh, relies on holder estimates for the linearized problem. Okay. And uh, uh, so in, in, in this particular case, since our operator has changed, we have to look at the linearized problem corresponding to this particular operator over here. And uh, here I have written uh, delta t is equal to a i t d square by d x i square. In our particular case, uh, a i t is one upon lambda i t whole square. Yeah. So, but one can um, one can uh, see that the proof works in general for these kind of operators with suitable condition of boundedness. That's what I would like to mention. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, for the yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the result of holder estimate which uh, I require uh, for local existence. And um, so uh, again, this is related to the um, linearized operator. So we have uh, this equation, and um, yeah, it's the same yeah, with the initial condi initial normal. Uh, initial uh, Neumann condition, the function phi not satisfying this, then, then we have the following estimate where the constant uh, is independent of theta, 
phi one and phi naught. So this is the uh, Neumann condition function which appears there. This is the boundary condition on um, the initial function, you know, I should say, at t equal to zero. And um, this is your function which appears on the right hand side of here. Yeah, this phi naught, phi one, and theta over here. Yeah? So the function is independent of this and you get older estimates for a solution of the linearized problem. Um, so uh, uh, what uh, I would like to mention here is that uh, the proof of the linearized problem uses expansions of the estimates of uh, FAPES and Riviere paper uh, to the operator delta t. Uh, together with, of course, the Neumann boundary, uh, the Nabla T, which we have. And, and uh, in fact, uh, this was uh, done uh, the, the, because uh, we have used the techniques and results of uh, Sharma and Sharma Morgan. Uh, uh, in this, this paper has appeared already in SIAM, and uh, they required similar result uh, for stationary domain. So we extend those results here to our operator and uh, we get uh, nice estimates and get the holder estimates that we require over here. Okay. So this is this is uh, one of the classic papers of uh, FAPES Revere. Yeah. And uh, what we do is uh, for the proof, uh, we first show that if F and G are uh, Lipschitz, then there exists a unique global solution using the solution of the linearized problem. And uh, if they are just locally Lipschitz, then we use cutoff function and arrive at the conclusion by taking limit. So here the condition that uh, F and G are quasi-positive uh, ensure, as I said initially, that uh, the solutions remain non-negative. Okay. So uh, next, uh, what we also obtain uh, is L1 estimates. Uh, again, I uh, prefer to show it separately because uh, uh, these uh, hold these, uh, uh, for both the results, yeah, for m equal to two or m greater than equal to two, uh, this particular step is kind of common. So here again, as you see, I have written only for uh, two components. Uh, so you let u v be the unique maximal non-negative solutions to phi, and suppose that uh, t max is finite, then uh, so this is a Neumann condition. Uh, this is Lipschitz and uh, VL1, uh, VL1 holds, then there exists this constant which depends on the diffusion coefficients, okay? Such that for each fixed T in the interval, we obtain this particular bound. We see that the L1 norms are all bounded. Of course, uh, one sees that this uh, constant is going to depend on T over here, okay? So uh, the proof of L1 estimates uh, is uh, is uh, like again it's I, I wouldn't say it is difficult but uh, of course one needs to add the solutions and then one uses the given data particularly this uh, L1 condition and uh, uses Grunwald inequality to arrive at the required. <clears throat> application of Grunwald inequalities uh, to arrive at the required result. So here I have written for, for two functions, okay? Remember, for m equal to two, uh, I am assuming one of them is bounded. So, uh, so assuming one of the, say, v is bounded. So here I'm uh, already, so it already means that v is in L1. So here, uh, I am saying that U is going to be uh, in L1 on boundary also, there is L1 bound. For V also, the L1 bound holds. Okay. Uh, uh, also, let me mention that uh, th this uh, one really doesn't require uh, one of the functions to be bounded over here. I have not used that property over here. Okay. So this, this, this L1 estimate is a common feature for uh, either M equal to two or M greater than equal to two. And it, it does not use 
one of the functions or any component function to be bounded. Okay. Yeah. So is there any question? Because I'm not seeing anyone. So. Is there any question? Uh, but because I, I, I don't know to deal with this uh, thing that appears. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so there was a question in the chat again. So now I wasn't sure if Claudio also had one, but the question again from Boris in the um, chat, he's saying that I'm actually trying to improve reaction diffusion in epidemic systems, and he would like to know if there are biological implications of an isotropy in the epidemic model. I don't know if this is maybe i i i would mean i i mean offhand i cannot say anything unless i see the equation okay and then we have another question uh so claudio uh would like to see again equation five yeah you you please stop me because i'm i'm not looking at this i cannot see chat or anything here so you 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 please you, you can stop me and ask. Yes. Now this question just came in. This from Claudia. So. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Yes. There is an error there. <laughs> there is an error here. Please. It is. It is this. I should have written here. Di delta t minus a t u i here. Okay, thanks, he says. So I think you can go on. So let me go ahead. Where is I? Yeah. Yeah, so I was I was talking about the proof, you know. So Yes. Uh, so, so uh, for for m equal to two. Okay. So, so uh, why did we do m equal to two separate and uh, m greater than equal to separate? So, uh, again, as I said, since our work is based on um, my collaborators' work, uh, recent work, and I think it is quite interesting because uh, there, there is a paper by uh, Martin Hollis uh, where, where they are dealing with um, two components and uh, where, uh, where they assume one of them is bounded and they prove global existence, uh, again, only for stationary case. Okay? They prove for stationary case. And uh, they, they use different techniques. I, I, I think it is semi-group. They, they use techniques of semi-group, if I'm correct, uh, to prove their results. So in her recent work, my collaborator uh, proved, uh, proved uh, this result. That is, uh, when m is uh, equal to 2, one of them is bounded. Uh, she used uh, duality and uh, Lyapunov function, type of functional, uh, to prove this. So, uh, without using the semi group theory methods, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, so uh, it was natural that uh, we extend the similar ideas uh, to the evolving or deforming domain case. So, that's what I have written here that. Uh, uh, we, 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 our proof uh, is combination of duality argument. So the duality argument gives you LP bounds for the component functions. And, and then, then uh, if you want to extend, so what one usually does is that uh, you assume T max is finite. If we want to show T max is infinity. So you assume by contradiction T max is finite. And then, then uh, the duality argument gives you LP bounds. And uh, what one does is uh, one uses uh, Lyapunov type of functional, okay? So which is defined by this particular polynomial. So as you can see, I have written it only for two components case. So one uses this kind of functional and uh, derives, uh, you differentiate it with respect to T, 
uh, you derive uh, Gronwald type of inequality using this functional, and, and then you try to not try, then you show that the solution is bounded up to the boundary t equal to t max. Okay, so then 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 that would be a contradiction to the local existence where we have already shown that the component solution go to infinity. So norm goes to infinity as t approaches t max. So that is how one uh, arrives at a contradiction to the fact that t max is finite. So the the uh, novelty in her work was uh, this uh, Lyapunov functional, which uh, is uh, nice. Uh, it is much uh, simpler than uh, 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 than uh, a similar functional which was used for general M components by uh, by. Uh, uh, in work of uh, Koachi and his collaborator. Uh, where uh, they had a slightly more complicated polynomial. It is still a polynomial equation, but yeah. So thetas here are constants. No? So here there is just one theta. So this is a constant. There is a choice of theta involved over here where the condition uh, which are given uh, on G yeah, that is used. No? So that is the proof. And uh, of course, uh, what I would like to say is uh, that for M in general, in general, if we don't assume that one any of the component is bounded, when you don't make any assumption on uh, any component, then uh, one can still use uh, this. Uh, this is something which we have just recently done. Uh, one can extend this polynomial to general M. So here, instead of just UV, you can write it down for u1, u2, um, and uh, again use Lyapunov type of uh, arguments like you differentiated, and then uh, try to estimate get LP bounds, and then you use trace theorems, embeddings, and uh, you will get uh, contradiction to the assumption that T max is finite. So this is something that we have been working on. Um, I think last couple of months and uh, yeah I, I think uh, I have not really shown you any proof but uh, this is the thing which uh, I would like to end with over here so let me let me show the these are the references this is not comprehensive um, uh, so this is the paper of Phipps review and these are some of the references it is paper of cross as you see that it's very recent they have quite beautiful pictures over there and uh, yeah yeah this is plaza's paper uh, yeah if someone needs a reference for chandra shekhar's paper maybe i can give uh, so so this is the uh, this is the recent work which has been already accepted of my collaborator on which uh, our results are based uh, I, I would like to make a remark here uh, that, um, as I mentioned, uh, Chandrasekhar had also, Chandrasekhar and his collaborators had also proved uh, global existence um, uh, for evolving domains. Uh, but what they had done is that uh, in their analysis, they had uh, changed, used a transformation to change your uh, uh, Instead of delta T, we work with uh, delta T as we have tried to do in our proofs. That's what, uh, that's one, I think, uh, one major difference which we have. Uh, also, uh, yeah, I, I think that is all that I would like to say. There are a lot of things uh, which we are planning to work on because uh, we plan to. Uh, develop this for uh, interactions, surface and uh, uh, surface, bulk surface interaction of uh, reaction diffusion equations. And uh, yeah, that is in progress. So the paper will be on archive maybe in a couple of days. So yeah, I, I think I would like to end over here. Um, if someone wants to see more details, I can share with them. And, uh, I think I would like to end here.
Okay, so thank you very much for, uh, for a very interesting talk. So do we have any questions? If so, you may feel free to unmute yourself and ask, or you can also type in the chat and I will relay the question. Because I cannot see the yeah. yes. Yes, so we'll see. So perhaps uh, while people are thinking if you have a question or not, I can ask. So from the point of view of a completely non-expert, of course, in in this, I was just trying to understand a bit better your assumptions in the global existence theorem. So. Uh, yeah, I don't understand them very well, so maybe if you could explain a bit more. Um, see how this, for example, this assumption here. Yeah. Assumption B, well, what does it mean? Um, sort of morally speaking, let's say, not just technically. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, this, is, uh, this is relating all the nonlinear functions which appears on the right-hand side. So mm -hmm. it, it, it probably gives you a combined condition that, you know, means... Uh, you cannot so this is this is like a diagonal matrix acting acting on the vector f1 f2 fm okay yes. you, uh, you you have a diagonal matrix a1 a2 am which uh, which acts on f1 f2 fm and uh, in fact i should mention that uh, this this condition um, I, I think it has its origin in math biology or the problems which they consider uh, some of these conditions appear naturally. Okay. Uh, means, uh, since you asked, uh, in, in fact, uh, the one of the original conditions uh, with which my collaborator has worked with is what is called as uh, inter intermediate sum condition, where instead of a diagonal matrix, you have a lower triangular matrix. Mm. So, uh, and and that that condition was. Uh, formulated by uh, uh, Morgan. In, so if one sees uh, their papers, one you has references to that condition, uh, which is slightly more... So, so uh, I, I should say these conditions naturally occur in the real-life applications. Is it possible to explain why or how they occur naturally? Or something just... Very um, basic way. I'll give you examples. Uh, I don't know if my if my uh, yeah, I, I'm I, I'm too new to the subject to comment on these. But but the examples which are there, uh, uh, the functions on the right hand side, whatever nonlinearities they put, they do satisfy such conditions. And as I said, this is slightly stronger. Um, the, the intermediate sum condition is um, slightly more common. It, it covers more general exam, uh, general varied kind of applications. So I am sorry. I am also learning. Okay, naturally. <laughs> yeah, but at least that is what I have seen that uh, in the examples which are cited or where the works are there, uh, these conditions are satisfied, yes. Okay. So, any other questions? Okay, so Kavi, we cannot hear you well, uh, or not at all, actually, at least I cannot. So, okay, so Cloud, you will type, I think, and in the meantime, we have a question in the chat from Joanna Terra, who's asking, are there uniform in time L1 estimates? Um, oh, I didn't. Uniform in time. No, I don't think so. So we have the answer, yes, from, I think, is this your collaborator, Bandana Sharma? No, or mentioned in the talk, yeah. Yeah, good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as I said, this is work in progress. So yeah, but but, but the way way I have I have mentioned here, uh, the estimate depends on time. Mm. The, the way I have mentioned in this this result here, the way we have it. Uh, so so if we want uniform estimates, so yes, I think we require some 
one has to be here here it is time dependent yeah that's what yeah so that's my collaborator so thank you vandana yes <laughs> Okay, and then we have another question it's from Claudia saying, I did not understand how the domain evolves in equation five. So we go back to this. Evolves in the... Uh, okay. Uh, so so actually, uh, actually what I have done here is uh, we have this is this is my original equation this is my original equation where where so so what i have done is that um, i i have i have written so now if i if i do uxt equals to uh, maybe i'm just uxt is once i substitute this my x depends or x is in domain omega so if I want to go to the C, I will have to use this relation to go back to C. This is the, the, the usual reaction diffusion equation does not involve this term. Uh, it does not involve delta T. Have I answered his question? Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I cannot see the chat. Okay. Cannot see the chat. Okay. Yes, we have no answer yet from Claudio, but I think he's typing something. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. in the meantime, we have people saying thank you for the for the web conference and for the talk. So. No, you're welcome for listening to me. But yeah. Uh, here, yeah, I can, yeah. In, in this equation, it is uh, the the evolution is visible in in uh, the operator and this linear term. Okay, so so we have a follow up question here. So from Claudio saying, but do you prescribe the evolution of omega t prior to finding the solution of u or not? Yes, 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 yes. So it is. It is. Uh, it is uh, given by uh, atx. Eh? The flow is given by this. Omega t is uh, at times omega. So it is prescribed. Hmm. The flow is prescribed. Okay. Okay. So any more questions? If not, I think we can thank the speaker again for this very interesting talk. And I will hope to see you all next week on November 19 for the next speaker. And here is also.